Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. My name is Sirio Farrell, the first sword of Bravos, and you are watching the AFK show. Just so. <laughs> Hello everyone, how are we doing today? Are y'all ready for, for Carrie Elwes? Can we be a little bit louder? That was awesome. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please meet your host, Mr. Dave Morales. Hey, what's going on? That's it, you're gonna clap for him and I get nothing? What is this all about? Houston, Texas, are you having a great comic palooza? I asked this uh, the other night when I was doing the Stan Lee panel. By the way, anybody that was here for the Stan Lee panel, we had so much fun. Oh, wow, quite a few of you. Awesome. That was an incredible evening, wasn't it? It was great. But I asked a couple of people the other night, I said, are you going to be here tomorrow? Are you going to be here the next day? And everybody was like, yes, yes, yes. So I will ask that right now. How many people are coming back for the fourth and final day tomorrow? Awesome. Well, it's it's going to be a very exciting uh, day. And, of course, something that Comic Palooza is doing this year uh, that's very, very cool because, of course, it's Memorial Day weekend. And don't forget to tell your friends and post this on your social media that tomorrow, military, former, current, get in absolutely free. That is our thank you on behalf of Comic Palooza to those that serve this great nation tomorrow. And you can tell them how much fun that you've had here. All right, speaking of fun, let's continue, you guys. Are you ready? This is an incredible actor. You guys know him. You've seen all his, I mean, the classic movies that he's been in. He's been in so much. And we're going to break it down. We're going to talk about it. We're going to get him to say that famous phrase that you know, that you love. Play it. Yes, he will say that. And you know what I'm talking about, right? Comic Palooza. Give it up. Keep it going right here. Mr. Carey Ellis. I warned them. I told them to behave today. You did? I did. I said, Carrie, I said, I, I told, I said, Houston, Texas, don't embarrass me in front of Carrie. Oh, that ain't going to happen. <laughs> so, you know, I want to ask you right off the top, have you ever been to Houston? Let's, let's start with that question. Yes, I have. I love this town. Uh, everyone, it, yeah, that's right, yeah. All right. Houston rocks. Houston rocks. I love it here. Awesome, and uh, we, we love having you here. All right, so there, there is a story going around about you um, amongst the, some of the cons and, and things like that. And I've, and I've talked, I'm, of course, I'm in media. I'm sure you've seen this on Fox 26. And, uh, and, and I've talked to some of my media friends that have actually interviewed you and spent some time with you before. And you have a reputation, I will tell you right now, Carrie. You have a reputation of being one of the nicest guys around. Uh. And I think... You know, I, you know, because, you know, a lot of times with Hollywood... Who are your sources? <laughs> <laughs> no, but a lot of people, you know, a lot of actors, and you've been in some humongous films. I mean, you're just, you're just a, an awesome guy. And, and so, uh, you know, you have every right to have a huge ego. And, and I spoke to some of my fellow film critics around the country yesterday, and I said, I can't believe, guess who I'm meeting, guess who I'm hosting the panel with? And they said, you're going to love him. Oh, so thank you. it's, a great, it's a great day to have you here. Thank you. And thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, you know, let, let's, just, let's just open it right now. I, I guess I should ask the crowd here. Has anybody ever heard of a movie? Oh, I don't know. It's called The Princess Bride. Yeah. 
Yes, I was in The Princess Bride. <laughs> As you wish. Oh, he said it! Is the line that everyone wants me to say, so I'm not going to say it. But yes, no, um, I feel very blessed to be a part of that film because uh, it's given me the, the career I have today and the life I have today and uh, all of these wonderful fans and uh, who love the film. And, uh, and, and because of that, I've actually been asked to write a book about the film. And uh, if you go on Amazon.com, you can pre-order it. It's going to be out in October. And uh, everybody contributed to the book. Uh, Billy Crystal, Robin Wright, Rob Reiner, everybody. And, uh, you know, it's not finished yet, <laughs> but it will be in time for Christmas, and, uh, and we're having a lot of fun writing it, yeah. Okay, so, but let's, let's take you back a little bit. Okay. Let's talk about the, the audition, when you actually auditioned for the role of Wesley in this film. Uh, do, do you remember what that was like? The, the, was it, were you nervous? I mean, obviously you were nervous. It was a, you know audition. Yeah. But uh, did, tell us a little bit about that when okay. you audition. Well, this is, by the way, this is going to be all in the book. So uh, I thoroughly recommend that you buy the book, obviously. Um, <laughs> because every story you've wanted to know about The Princess Bride is in there. Um, but yes, the audition was like this. I was in Berlin making a film at the time, uh, a little independent. Uh, actually, it was a German-Finnish co-production. And uh, I was staying in a hotel in Berlin, and I get a call from my agent saying that Rob Reiner and his producing partner, Andy Scheinman, are traveling to Berlin to see you. And uh, of course, I knew, I didn't know who Andy Scheinman was, but I knew who Rob Reiner was. I, I grew up in, on All in the Family. I knew that show, and I'd obviously seen a, a little movie of his called Spinal Tap. You guys know Spinal Tap? <laughs> Which has since become a cult classic. And, uh, and I was very nervous because she told me on the phone, my agent, that they were interested in meeting me for the role of Wesley for Princess Bride. And I, I thought, well, I'd read the book when I was 13, so I knew what it was about. And I thought, my God, Marty DeBerge is going to come and interview me. You know, uh, I couldn't believe it. You know, and uh, they came to my hotel, and I kept saying to myself, my God, I, I hope they don't make me read. You know, because I'm terrible at, at reading at auditions. I just, you know, most of the work I get is from offers because readings just, I, I, I suck at them, you know? And, uh, and they come in, uh, Andy and Rob, and they were very sweet, and we sit down and we, you know, chat a little bit about movies and all of the family, and suddenly Rob pulls out a copy of the script, and, and my heart sank. I'm like, oh no, it was going so well. Why did, he, <laughs> why did he have to do that? Why? And he pulls out the script and he goes, you don't mind if uh, we just read a couple of lines here and there. I just want to hear how it sounds, you know? And I thought, that's it. I, 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 there's, there's no way. I'm not going to get the part. There's not a chance. Wait, when he hears me read it, he's just going to go, well, this guy sucks. And uh, so he pulled out, I think he pulled out the, um, the monologue that Wesley has about uh, the Dread Pirate, becoming the Dread Pirate Roberts, right? And I start to read it, and I'm stumbling and fumbling and on the whole thing. And I'm thinking, this is, this is just awful. It's just awful. And I'm trying to be as you know, confident as I can. I'm like, you know, uh, how about that? And uh, he stops me halfway through. He goes, OK, that's enough. And I thought, well, that's it. It's done. You know? And he goes, well, well you know, we, uh, you sound pretty good. Uh, you know, I'll have to run it, run it all by the studio and see if they like the idea of hiring you for this film. But if they do, you know, obviously, we can meet some more and discuss it. And I'm thinking, well, you know, I'll never see this guy again, right? And um, they were very gracious and very sweet, and then uh, we parted ways, and about a week later, I got a call from my agent saying I got the part. So, I mean, uh, how, how blessed am I? You know, I mean, I couldn't believe my luck, really. I think it's our luck. Don't you, don't you agree with me? <laughs> it's just our luck. I know we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Princess Bride, you know, in just a couple of minutes, and I, I know that we're going to get more of the fan questions. And, and, and again, you guys, I encourage you to pre-order this book uh, on Amazon. It's coming out October 7th is the release, uh, the book uh, that he wrote, uh, the behind-the-scenes stuff. But, you, you know, Carrie, you've worked with some of the biggest names in, in show business. I mean, and that's really a, a true testament to your acting. Oh, I, mean, you. I mean, when you, honestly, I mean, th these people decided to cast you in these movies, and it's not everybody, that, and I'm going to, it's a who's who's uh, of, of directors. Listen to this. He's worked with people like Francis Ford Coppola. You guys have heard of him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Steven Spielberg, I mean, some incredible, you know, Rob Reiner, of course, but I, I want to break down the Francis Ford Coppola, of course, Bran uh, Stoker's Dracula. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that film and working with, with Francis. Well, Francis, thankfully, did not ask me to read. 
And that was, <laughs> I, 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 I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I met with him at his office and, uh, and of course, you know, I, I grew up on his movies and uh, I'd seen all of them. And uh, so I was, I was very, very nervous. Um, but I went in and I met him and um, he couldn't have been nicer. I mean, he was just, he just offered me the part in the room, you know? And, uh, and we shot that in, uh, on the Sony lot in, uh, in Los Angeles. And Francis wanted to, um, he wanted to try and use no CGI at all. He wanted to make the whole film using nothing but tricks, you know, in front of the camera rather than in post-production. So, uh, yeah, right? That's pretty cool. I thought that was pretty brave. And, uh, and then he decided he wanted to take all of the actors up to Napa and rehearse the film on the sound studios that he has up in, 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 uh, up in his house at Napa. So we all got to go to like, you know, Francis Ford Coppola boot camp for a couple <laughs> of weeks, you know, which was very much uh, an interesting uh, experience because uh, it was like being on a, um, on a reality show because we, he, he had all these camera crews around filming us all day long. So the minute we woke up in the morning, you woke up with a camera in your face, you know? So he documented the entire experience. So somewhere in his archives, there's all of us uh, waking up in the morning and going to class and doing acting games and things like that. So it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And anywhere in his house, did he have any uh, a Godfather poster? I'm just asking no, that because... No, you know what? He doesn't do that. He's very modest really? about it. Yeah, it's nothing, no flashy stuff. He has an incredible library there. He has like a huge barn that he's converted into a library. And so, you know, he encourages us to go and do research there. So he said, you know, if you want to go and watch movies, there's got, he's, obviously his film library is yeah. extraordinary, right? And he sort of gave us all a list of books to look at and read and and movies to watch so we get the flavor of the kind of film that he wanted to make. And so it was really, it was an amazing experience to, to, to just to be there and, and, and learn from him, yeah. Let's talk about Steven Spielberg, of course, the film Tintin, which by the way, I, that was one of my favorite movies that came out. Did you guys like uh -huh. Tintin, are you with me? And, and actually, you. Carrie, I gotta tell you right now, my mom is actually sitting in the front row right there. She's hey, got mom. the Maleficent horns. Hi. Mom you? bought me the Tintin books because no I love the movie so much awesome. that you were part of. So. The Tintin books, okay, this is an interesting story. I grew up in England, obviously, and Tintin was very much a part of the English culture. Uh, you know, Hergé is a, is a Belgian artist, if you don't know already. And if you haven't bought the books for your kids, um, I thoroughly recommend them. They're amazing. I'm, Hergé really kind of wrote cartoons that look like storyboards, which I think is why Spielberg got interested in getting involved, because the, the, the books are like little storyboards for movies, you know? And so as a kid, being fascinated by movies by myself, I would read these books and I could, you could visualize almost an animated movie in your head by reading them. So I'm sure you have comic books that you guys all love that you feel the same way about, right? Well, that's how I felt about Tintin. And so I collected every single one of these books. I think there's like 30 books or something yeah. like that. They're amazing. Anyway, so um, here's this audition. Uh, I'm in a supermarket in Los Angeles shopping with my wife and kid. And uh, we're pushing a cart and we're you know, buying groceries and what have you. And my wife suddenly like freezes. And she, I think, well, what's, what's wrong? What happened? She goes, honey, honey. Steven Spielberg in aisle nine. <laughs> and I go, come on, he is not. She goes, yes, yes, he is, he's back there, aisle nine, check it out, check it out. I go, Steven Spielberg doesn't shop for himself. <laughs> he's got people who do that for him, for sure, right? She goes, honey, I'm telling you right now. So I pull the cart back and I, <laughs> I do that and sure enough, it's Steven Spielberg, you know, he's like buying Captain Crunch or something, you know? <laughs> I'm going, no way. I couldn't believe it. She goes, you have to say hi, right? I go, well, of course, you know? So, um, you know, what am I gonna do? B blow off Steven Spielberg? No, all right, so I pull the cart around with my daughter and we go down the aisle and I, I go, Mr. Spielberg, and he goes, hey, Carrie, how are you? And uh, first of all, I couldn't believe he knew my name, you know? I, I, um, and I knew he was making Tintin at the time, which was my favorite set of books growing up. So, uh, 
after a little bit of chit chat and how are you, what are you doing? And, and I said, uh, not a whole lot, but I hear you're making Tintin, is that true? And he goes, yes, I am. And I go, well, sir, I, I, I'm sorry to press you in aisle nine between your Cap'n Crunch and your Count Chocula, but <laughs> I just happen to be the biggest Tintin fan. You, you, I, mean, are you, I mean, is there any role left? I'll, I don't care if it's half an hour on film or 10 seconds, I'll come do it. He goes, hmm. He said, you know, I wish you'd come a couple of weeks earlier because now we've cast all the roles, but there may be one role left. I don't know if you want it. It's a couple of days work. And I go, please, I'm happy to do it. He goes, well, can you do a French accent? I went, but of course. <laughs> And that's how I got the job in Tintin with a... a, a oh, a, man! Yeah. So, this is, this, is what, this is what's happened now, Carrie. Next time I see it, which I, I, I watch it over and over again, I'm going to think of Captain Crunch now when I there see Tintin. We do that. Uh, okay, um, Mel Brooks. Yes. And, of course, uh, we all know the, yes. the Minute Tides movie. Come on, guys! <laughs> you know... Mel Brooks, he's just a legend. A legend. And so, uh, can you share a little bit about you know working with him and, and how that got started? And Mel, again, I was very blessed. Uh, like I said, I get most of my roles from straight offers rather than auditioning, because as I've stated earlier, mm -hmm. I'm not that great at auditioning. But um, I guess he had seen The Princess Bride, and he thought I'd be right, given that I had a sort of Errol Flynn-y kind of a vibe going at that time and he said you'd be perfect for it and so I went in and met with him and um, we actually cast Dave Chappelle together we saw a lot of actors and when when Dave came in he was just so amazing and we knew right then and there this guy's a star um, and we had so much fun making it because Mel is just the most positive guy his favorite word is yes <laughs> only occasionally we go mm, I don't know but mostly it was just yes like that all day long so he's all about positive affirmation and uh we just had a blast making it. it was just hilarious all day long it seemed like you had i mean that's an incredible cast and it just yeah. you, you could just you, you know working with that it had to have been just fun every day every day shooting that thing no he was he, i mean and he, i don't think he's happier than when he's on the set making a movie so and he's just a, a sweet a very very sweet man um and obviously a comic giant i mean i grew up with his movies probably like half of you did you know uh, Blazing Saddles, Young Frankenstein, right? Yeah. yeah. And so uh, I, I couldn't believe that he wanted me to be a, you know, a part of his legacy. So I was just thrilled, absolutely thrilled. All right, I want to go back to Princess Bride. Okay. <laughs> Can we do that? Can we do that, Comic Palooza? You know, did you ever imagine when you guys were shooting that film that all these years later, that it would be just as big as, I mean, everybody, raise your hand if you own a copy of this film. I mean, the entire room, wow. there you go. Okay, give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> but did you have any idea, you know, that when you when we were shooting this film that like, you know, I guess you don't know, you know. You like, never know. You never know when you're making a movie. Look, no one sets out to make a bad movie and God knows I've made a couple, you know. Uh, but, uh, Thankfully, I've been in some great ones, too. So, you know, you just never know. You never know. Um, uh, we had no idea it was going to turn out to be this, you know. I mean, we, we, we were just having fun making it, and we, you know, you hope for the best when you make a movie, and you, you, once you finish it, you're on to the next job, and oftentimes it's almost like half a year or a year later that you come to, the movie comes out, uh, or you do publicity for it, and so by then you think, okay, well, Hopefully this film comes together and it has to be all the right ingredients, you know. I mean, you're literally trying to capture lightning in a bottle. You want to get all the right people together, the right cast, the right director, the right editor, the right set designer, the right costumes, the right everything, the right music, everything. And you just never know. I mean, you just never know. So we couldn't believe it that when it came out, you know, it just actually didn't do that well, surprisingly. Because nobody knew, nobody, <laughs> that's funny, that's funny. Um, it was. We were. We couldn't. Bl we were like inconceivable too. So um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, but the studio had no idea how to market the film, and I think that's why you know we had no trailer. 
if you can believe that. In fact, I think we had one trailer and it was so bad they pulled it from the theater. Um, we had no TV ads and the studio was stumped. They had no idea that how to sell it. Was it, a, was it a comedy? Was it an adventure movie? Was it a fairy tale? Was it a kid's movie? Was it an adult's movie? They had no idea. They'd never come across a, a film with that many genres in it that they didn't know which one to focus on. So they ended up just focusing on the grandfather and, and the grandson aspect of it with the poster that they showed us, you know, with, with uh, Peter Falk and Fred Savage, which is a nice part of the story, obviously, very sweet. Um, but when it came out, nobody knew, really knew about it. So it came and went. It, it only made like, uh, I think, 30, the, the film cost 15, and back then it made like 30.8 million or something like that, which is about 60 million today. But it was like half, it made a little bit over the half the budget, which for the studio is like, that's nothing. You know, they couldn't, they weren't, they were like, whatever. And they moved on, right? And the film really found its legs in some new medium called VHS. Um, which for you kids today is, a, is when we used to watch movies on video, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what happened was people started renting it and then they would recommend it to their friends and family and then they would buy copies and give it, you know, I can't tell you how many, it's so sweet, people coming up with their old VHS copies, copies for me to sign. I mean, they're all worn and everything. They're like, you don't understand, Mr. Elwes, this has been in our family for four generations. <laughs> Was he from Texas, that accent, you know? I was, no, go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry for that terrible Pakistani accent. But, <laughs> but no, and so it's so great because these are like, for these guys, for these families that come to me with these copies, it's like their cherished thing, you know, because they've held on to it and it's something that means something to them. It's so sweet. So, uh, you know, it, it's become this thing now where after it came out in VHS, it suddenly made, started making more money and becoming more, people became more aware of it and then it had this whole following and now this. And I, I mean, I, I couldn't be more grateful, honestly. I think I can speak for everybody involved in the picture that we're really, honestly, feel very blessed. So, thank you, thank you. I told Carrie backstage before we went on that I had a, a fun fact for him, just to give you an idea of how popular and how big this film is right now. And I'm going to tell him what it is right now. He doesn't know this. Uh, that there is a, a board game, a card game as well, that's coming out this year, you guys, really? of The Princess Bride. I was doing my research. It's coming out this year. So awesome. if you're a fan, you guys want to play the board game, it's coming out. I, 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 I'm telling you, I, I, I'm, I'm going to get it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to have cool, to get it too, man. right? I mean, so anyway, that's, that's kind of awesome. cool. cool. All right. I know we got the book coming out in yes. October, but I, I do, I do want to ask this one question. Is there, is there any story that you can share with us, you know, behind the scenes? Uh, uh, of The Princess Bride? Yeah, The Princess Bride. Okay, well, there are so many. Like I well, said, I, I want you all to please, if you have an Amazon account, you can save 10 bucks by ordering the book now. And, and I recommend that because I'm, yeah, 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 there you go. Yeah, come on. That's 10 bucks that could go towards your next purchase of your DVD copy of The Princess Bride. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Andre, what can I say? Andre the Giant, yeah. yeah. Andre. I, I get most, most of the questions I get asked are about Andre, because God bless him, he was just exactly as you imagine him to be. He was a, a real gentle giant, and he had this fixed smile on his face all day long. And he called everybody boss, which is hilarious from a guy who's seven foot four and 450 pounds, you know? You know, why, why he would think that anybody is his boss is just beyond me. Anyway, um, one day we were shooting outside in, the, uh, in a very hilly district in, uh, uh, of Derbyshire where we shot the movie. And it's actually called the Peak District and it's called that for a reason because these hills are more like peaks, yeah? And Andre, you know, had a tough time walking around anyway. Um, and it was tough for him. He couldn't fit inside the transpo vans that took all the cast and crew up to the location. So the production decided to rent him uh, something called an ATV, an all-terrain vehicle. Yeah, well, we'd never seen those in England before, you know. I mean, that's an American phenomenon, the all-terrain. I mean, what a, you know. And Andre was thrilled. You know, you see this seven-foot guy on an all-terrain vehicle moving faster than he's ever moved before. He was, he was rocking, he was laughing, oh, <laughs> oh, all day long. And he, 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 he didn't even want to go to the set, he just wanted to roll around the mountainsides on this thing. 
And of course, you know, when you see a seven foot four guy rolling on an ATV, you tend to stop what you're doing and, and look at him, you know? So he comes pulling up to me one day, he goes, right there, and pulls right up to me, and he goes, hey, boss. <laughs> I go, yeah, hey, Andre, how you doing? You having fun? He goes, ah. <laughs> he goes, you want to try it, boss? I go, I don't know, Andre, I don't think that's a good idea, man. I mean, you know, I've never ridden. Oh, come on, boss. Come on. You love it. You love it. So I politely declined. And then the next day, we go to the set, and there he is again, rolling around everywhere, right? He pulls up to me again. Boss. <laughs> you know you want to. Come on. And, you know, I thought, you know, I'm, t what is it, 21, 22, whatever it was, and I'm thinking, okay, why not? I mean, how, you know, i got to try and be cool. I'm thinking I'm cool, I'm not. And I go, okay, fine. He goes, ah. <laughs> and he lets me get on the bike, and I've never ridden one of these things before. I had no business being on him at all. And he get, he, his, the guy who handles the bike for him, the ATV for him, says, it's very simple, it's like a motorbike, you just, here's the clutch and you put your thing here and there's the brake and, blah, blah, blah. and Andre goes have fun boss <laughs> and off I go and within two seconds this thing lurched forward I go over a rock and I crush my big toe between the rock and the clutch pedal and I just I knew it was an instant break I felt the big toe it was bent completely backwards and I just went oh god no, 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 no. I haven't even got to the sword fighting scenes yet. What am I going <laughs> to do? Oh, my God. So they all come running over, even Andre walking as fast. He, oh, what happened, boss? <laughs> I go, I go, I broke, I think I broke my toe. And the nurse, the medic, set medic comes over, and they carefully take off my boot, and she looks at my toe, and it's now the size of, a, you know, the Empire State Building. She goes, yeah, I think you broke it. And I go... <laughs> No, no, I, I can't have broken it. There's no way I could have broken my toe. And uh, she goes, well, I think you need to go to the hospital because you need to get a splint made because I'm not qualified to make a splint right here. And I said, no, 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 you don't understand. I, I, I have to go back to work now and you gotta help me. You gotta make one. She goes, well, I could make one maybe with a couple of twigs or something. <laughs> I said, do what you can, please, anything. So she, God bless her, she made a, you know, a temporary splint. Uh, they had to cut the boot to make it fit on my foot. And I'm telling everyone, I'm fine, I'm gonna be fine. And you know, and he said, really? Why don't you get to your feet? And I get to my feet, I'm like, oh, I can barely walk. And I'm thinking, how am I gonna convince Rob Reiner that I can run or jump or f forget sword fighting, right? And I'm thinking, I'm gonna be fired. Because if you get an accident on a movie, if, I don't know if you know this, but if you, if you have an accident while you're shooting a film, that's considered workers' comp. And the insurance comes and they cover it and they shut down production while you, get, while you heal and what have you. But if you get an accident off the set while fooling around like a jackass on an ATV <laughs> like me, right? That's not workers' comp. That's just being a, an idiot, right? So I'm thinking, that's it. They're going to fire me. You know, we're two and a half weeks into shooting or three weeks into shooting, I'm going, that's it. I mean, how am I going to sword fight? I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm telling everyone, don't tell Rob. But please, please, just don't tell him. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And like an idiot, I'm thinking, I'm going to keep this a secret, you know? <laughs> what a, I mean, what a maroon, right? <laughs> so I, I jump out of the van at the, on the set, and I'm walking like, you know, I'm just eating the pain, walking up to him, like pretending I'm fine, which is ridiculous, totally ridiculous, right? I walk up to him, he goes, hey, you carry. How you doing? And I'm thinking, he doesn't know. There's no way he knows. No. I'm like, of course, this is what comes out of my mouth. I'm like, I'm fine. How are you? He goes, okay. I'm good. Are you sure you're okay? And I could tell he knew at that point. I'm like, oh, God. I said, Rob, I am so sorry. He goes, it's all right. I just, you know, you got to tell me these things. So he was very sweet about it. And he said, uh, can you walk? I go, yeah. He goes, can you run? I go, I think so. <laughs> he goes, look, don't worry about it. Go to the hospital. Let's get a proper splint made, and then we'll finish shooting for the day, and we'll take it from there. But God bless him. He was so nice about it. I was absolutely terrified that I was going to be fired. Oh, so, man. I don't know.
Glad you're okay. Yeah. I learned a valuable lesson that day. And the valuable lesson is this. It's got, you know, in England they have this whole mentality of like, oh, the show must go on, you know. But the fact of the matter is, you know, it's always better to be honest and straightforward. And, and I don't know what I was thinking. I guess I was operating out of fear, thinking I'd be replaced. Um, but Rob was so sweet. He goes, Carrie, we would never replace you. You're great in the part, and, and don't worry about it. So anyway, like I said, he was very sweet about it, and we, we finished. The so when you look at the sword fighting scenes now, <laughs> I've actually got a broken toe. So uh, <laughs> I'm kind of proud of the fact that, yeah, thank you. I got through it. With Glad him, you're with okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. And you know, something else that we just learned too, uh, Carrie, you're really good with impressions. Thank you. <laughs> All the characters you've done up here on stage. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you've done the voices, impersonations, and stuff like that. All right, so I know we want to get some fan questions. Do you guys have some questions? We have a microphone set up right over here. So if you want to go over there, as much as time will allow, we're going to take some questions for Carrie. Cool. Everyone's ready? I think we're ready to get started. You ready, Carrie? Uh, I think so. Can we do this? Yeah. Cool. All right. Go ahead. Hi, Carrie. Um, Hello. What's your name? My name's Nicole. Hi, um, Nicole. And I just want to say before I ask my question, I have been to a lot of cons, and you are the nicest person I've ever oh, met. Oh, thank at a you. Con. Come and give me a hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> you didn't have to do that. That's my third straight day of carry rules. Hugs are for free. <laughs> Well, um, I'm a theater arts, a high school theater arts teacher, and right. uh, when I got my autograph, I know we talked about it briefly, but um, how did you feel when they announced they were going to put Princess Bride on Broadway, and can you give us any information about it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the uh, Sorry, um, the Princess Bride Broadway show, um, can you give us any information about it, and how did you feel when they said they were going to put Princess Bride on Broadway? On what? Broadway. Broadway. <laughs> oh, on Broadway. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear. Yeah, Broadway. Yeah, I mean, I heard that story too. I asked Bill Goldman, the writer, about it, and I think they're trying to do it because obviously it would make it. I mean, <laughs> how easy would it be to write songs for that movie? I mean, there's another, <laughs> I mean, there's every single line is a is a song, you know. Um, I'm hoping they will. Obviously, I, I'm I'm probably a little old to play it myself, but I think it would be a great musical. I hope they pull it off. I'm 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 hopeful. I have no more information, I'm sorry, than that. Yeah, I Other took a survey from Broadway Across America, and they were like, what show would you like to see in Houston? And Princess Bride was listed. And yeah. I was like, of course, we'll see that. That's crazy. It well, was. listen, you know what you have to do? Today with social media, you can campaign for stuff, and usually the producers pay very close attention to how the fans feel. So if you feel like you want to see a Broadway show of The Princess Bride, all you have to do is... Get, this, get involved with social media and let them know, and I'm sure they'll be taking very careful notice of all your comments and thoughts and ideas about it. So there you go. Thank you. I think right. we should get it started from Comic Palooza. What do you guys think? Start that campaign. Because, you know, Carrie, I'd, I'd actually like to hear the song As You Wish, I right? think would be the big showstopper right there. I, don't I know. think a anyone want a peanut song would be pretty good. <laughs> right? <laughs> Who's next? Hi, my name's Jonathan. Hi. Um, one thing, uh, you're drinking Kirkland Signature Water, and I work for Costco, so I think that's awesome. Oh, thank uh, you. That's Costco's br store brand. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, uh, my question is, I loved you as uh, Dr. Lawrence uh, Gordon. Okay. And th that, that role was just, uh, you, you played it incredible. Oh, my question thank is, you. what made you want to play that role? Okay, so um, I met James Wan in, uh, uh, I guess I met him in the farmer's market, which is a big market in Los Angeles on, on Fairfax, and uh, I didn't know. I'd read the script. I thought it was great, and the script was accompanied by a very small DVD, like a miniature DVD, and it was, uh, I guess, 10 minutes or eight minutes of a scene that he'd already shot in Melbourne using, I think, his, I think he raised the money from his grandmother or something like that, and it was of Lee Wanell, who's the, the guy who co-wrote the script with him, in this uh, very strange reverse bear trap mask that he was wearing, right? And I watched it, and I saw the style that, the, uh, that he was going for in terms of how he wanted to shoot the film. So when I met him, um, you know, it was such a dark script and so weird and, and strange. And when I met this guy, 
you know, I hate to judge a book by its cover, but <laughs> I was expecting, you know, kind of like a Marilyn Manson type folk, you know, fellow to show up. And here's this very sweet, unassuming, very gentle, sweet-spirited guy from, from Melbourne, and he goes, um, he, he has under his arm this uh, portfolio, and he begins to talk about the film. And as he's talking about the movie and how he wants to shoot it and how he wants to cast it and, and so on, he opens this portfolio, and in it are these incredible drawings that he's done of watercolors and ink drawings of the set. And there's a drawing of the set of the bathroom, and then there's a drawing of the, of the pig mass thing. And I'm turning the pages, and I'm just like, wow, these are amazing. He goes, and it turns out he painted and drawn all of these himself. So already I knew the guy was a, an artist. I mean, no question about it. And then I turn the page, and I get to like a blueprint of this reverse bear trap, bear trap mass that's in the movie. I don't know if you've seen the film, but this oh, is strange, oh, right? Okay. And it's a blueprint, and it's got like details of little blocks and keys and nuts and bolts and cogs and what have you. And I go, wow, that's, that's really detailed, uh, James. And he goes, yeah, it's operational. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out he spent like a year detailing. I mean, the guy didn't just show up with an, with a, with, with, just some clue about how to make this film. He and his friend Lee Wanao had spent like a year like working on this thing till he, I mean, it was so brilliant, you know? No one knew that that Jigsaw was the guy on the floor at the end and none of that. So it was an amazing reveal. I thought the film was really good. So I, I'm very proud to be a part of it. And they're wonderful filmmakers. So, yeah. Great, thank Great you. Great question. Thank you. Hi. Um, Hi, what's your name? Uh, Brandon. Hi, Brandon. Uh, given the fact that you've worked in almost every genre of film and television, from yes. children's to comedy to horror to drama, um, and oftentimes those overlap, what is your favorite genre to work in or genres? Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I really just, I never think about whether or not a genre is going to be one genre is better than the other. I guess if I had to pick one over another would be historical. I mean, history was my favorite subject at school, and, and if you look at my body of work, there's probably a lot more historical films that I've made than perhaps anything else in terms of genre, but yeah, that would probably be it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kerry, how are you doing? Hi, what's your Hi. name? My name is Joe Wolf. Hi. Uh, I'm uh, here today with my wife. Hi. Uh, Good. So I was coming up here to just ask you a question about The Princess Bride, which happens to be her favorite film of all time. But the cool. truth is, uh, we got married one year ago today. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Happy anniversary. Uh, and as a result, I was wondering if uh, I could call her up here to have a picture taken with you real quick. Sure. Why not? Oh, how about Where that? Where is she? Is she here? She's right there? Okay. <laughs> And there is their Christmas card right there. <laughs> you just did that for them, Carrie. I realized that was a pretty stupid question. I'm like, is she here? Yeah. And it's their anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she's at home. I, uh, I got to do the laundry on her. <laughs> Sorry. Dude, but I love your voices, by the way. <laughs> the voices that you do are, are, are you should, the voices are great. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Hi, Carrie. Hi, how are you? What's your name? I'm Shelby. Hi, Shelby. Um, my question is, how, what was it like to work with the cast of Psych? Aha! Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I had probably one of the most joyous, fun times on that show. Man, I tell you, the outtakes on that show are insane. <laughs> insane. I mean, uh, between James and Dulé, uh, it was impossible to get through a take without us cracking up. I mean, these guys are l Looney Tunes. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, I mean, I only had to hear, like, Dulé do his little scream, like a little girl. <laughs> and, and, and I lost it. The first time he did that, I didn't even know that was going to come out. I just lost it. Lost it. I'm like, what? Did you really just do that? And, uh, you know, um, 
No, we had so much fun, and, and the stuff they would come up with on the day. I mean, there's so many outtakes. I hope they put all the outtakes together in one, like, DVD or something. There's, there's just so many. We just had a blast. So much fun. And I'm sad it went off the air, but I guess all good things have to come to an end, right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, evening, Carrie. Uh, I'm Brian. Hi. Hi. And a um, huge fan, like, grew up watching Princess Bride as you oh, with Wesley. You. And when thank I saw you on Psych, I was just giddy to see you in another role like that. <laughs> thank you. And uh, I used to, I just admire you so much. And when I used to, was allowed to have hair, I used to style it like you as Wesley and stuff. So, huge nerd. <laughs> um, but if you had to choose one person to actually be would it, uh, between Wesley and Despero, which would you rather be and why? Oh, wow. The old fantasy question. <laughs> Lying in bed at night. <laughs> Who would I rather fantasize being? A pirate or a ridiculous art thief? <laughs> hmm. I don't know, actually. I haven't really spent a lot of time considering that, but uh, I guess, hmm. I don't know, maybe the pirate thing would be kind of fun? Yeah, yeah? What do you think? Okay. I don't want to disappoint my Despero fans, though. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. It's a tough one. I, I, listen, I love playing all the roles I do. So I really don't try and judge one over another. But, I, but thank you for your question. I appreciate thank you. it. Thank you. How you doing? My name's Joe. I've got another Despero question for you. OK. And, and the, the final episodes, do you believe that Despero was just still scamming the boys? Or did he, was he really Interpol? I personally, I personally think good question. he wasn't. Yes. I think he was scamming them. You know yes. what? That's a good question. I like to think that he really was scamming the boys. But, uh, you know, I think they left it open-ended on it for a reason, you know? Um, and that was half the fun of the character because he always kept them guessing, you know? Um, but, yeah, I, I, I like to think that he was just a massive scam artist and everybody was being fooled. Um, so, anyway. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, oh, yeah. Right. Hey, Carrie. I'm um, Thomas. Hi. Hi. Uh, quick question. Out of all of your work, what has been, as an actor, uh, what has been your favorite? My, my favorite role? Yes. Um, well, I think the one that's the most memorable would be The Princess Bride, simply because, of, yeah, it's, 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 it's the role that I call, I call the film the gift that keeps on giving. Like I explained earlier, it's the film that, you know, I, I meet people who bring their grandkids with their copies of the film to me, and it just gets passed on from, it's generational. It's one of those extraordinary things. It's like a family movie. And so, you know, that's the film that I guess I'll be most associated with in, for the rest of my career. No matter what movie I make, that'll be on my tombstone, as you wish. You know, I mean, that's it. <laughs> and I'm, you know, I'm okay with that, right? It beats, it beats, you know, no offense to Arnold, but it beats as, you, you know, n n I'll be back. <laughs> or, you know, I, I always, I always, you every know. time I think of uh, Robin Hood, I think of you as Robin, in Robin Hood. Oh, thank tights. you. Thank you. <laughs> Why? Because I can speak with an English accent? Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, hey, man. Um, my name is McDonald, actually, which is funny. But uh, you can call me Mickey. But um, I have two questions. Hi. For you. What's your name? Oh, McDonald. Hi. <laughs> but um, so uh, you're a, a guy with many talents. I know we all know that. And um, but I really want to know what was your spark? Like, what made you pursue what you do? What made me pursue acting? Yeah. Well, um, I grew up in a singly, single family household, and. Uh, you know, my mom had to go to work and to support uh, her three kids. And so, uh, you know, growing up in England in, 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 uh, in our apartment, my best friend became the television set. Um, and so, you know, by the way, you guys don't know how lucky you are in this country. In England, growing up, we had two channels. Two. Okay, so... Before remotes, this is dating myself, clearly, but you literally had the choice of this or that. <laughs> that was it. Two. 
So obviously, you know, if there was a party political broadcast on one channel, you'd be pretty much forced to watch whatever was going on on the other channel. And uh, the first show that I saw that really piqued my interest in acting was a show called, and you can probably find it on YouTube now, it's called um, Do Not Adjust Your Set. And it was with the early cast of Monty Python. I think John Cleese was in it. Yes, wow. John Cleese. And the great Michael Palin, who I am, is one of my favorite actors, Michael Palin. And, and Terry Jones uh, was in it. And it was this strange show. It was like a sketch comedy show, but it was really, a, really abstract and very weird. And I think um, the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band were in it or something like that. You know, okay, wow, wow, a Bonzo Dog, Dog Doodah Band fan. That's cool. Um, very obscure, very abstract, and I remember being, I don't know, maybe five or six and watching this show and going, wow, this is really wild and weird and wonderful. And I, I just realized that was something I wanted to do, and it was so funny and fun, and it looked like they were having a great time. So I just began to watch more and more TV shows and more movies, and I became immersed in movies and became a, like a movie nut. and. Uh, and that's how it started, really. Right. I, I just became fascinated by watching other actors and, and watching other shows. Yeah. All right. My second question is, um, we are coming from Lulu, so I would like to know, what's your favorite superhero? My favorite superhero? Ah. Well, you know, this is always a tricky question because <clears throat> if you say one specific superhero, then all the other superheroes in the room get pretty pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So I will say this. I, I love all superheroes. I think that, <laughs> right? Pretty fair, pretty Is fair. Is that a good uh, politically correct answer? Yeah. All right. There you go. <laughs> good answer. Hi, Hi Harry. I just Hi. To, first what? of all, thank you for being oh, here. Oh, thank you. What's your name? Everyone here. I'm Heather. Hi. Nice to meet you. I want to know if you're willing to share a funny, embarrassing, or a prank that you might have been a part of on any of the sets that you've been on throughout your career. A prank. Or an embarrassing story. Either one. Um... When, uh, when I made Hot Shots, um, yeah, thank you, thank you. I thought Charlie Sheen needed to be pranked. So uh, I arranged for a herd of goats to be put in his trailer. Yes. Somewhere, yes. And I, I, I hid in his bathroom so I could catch the moment of surprise when he opened the door. And I believe it was something like this. Oh my God, what the hell? What the heck is going on here? Who the heck brought these things in my trailer? So yes, that was probably the biggest prank, the goats. That's awesome, thank you. He deserved it. Hi, Carrie. Hi, how are you? What's your name? I'm good, and I'm Josh, in that Hi, Josh. order. Hi. Um, I love the Studio Ghibli movies, and I love that you oh, did the dubs you. of them. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. I was wondering, Miziaki. yes, are you a fan, and are you going to work on any of the other ones that are coming out in the future? Yes, well, obviously I'm a fan. I wouldn't have done them otherwise, but yes. Um, I don't know if they're, if, I mean, if they call me and ask me to do, I mean, that would be up to the fans if they want to so, be so inclined to, to once again mention on social media that they might want to hire Cario was to be in another Miziaki movie? I, I have no idea. But, um, but yeah, uh, I love doing it. And I thought, that, I mean, he's one of the most creative animators out there, clearly. And uh, I'm always amazed by the amount of fans that he has because, you know, between signing copies of or pictures of The Princess Bride or Robin Hood or whatever, Dracula, I get just as many Studio Ghibli fans <laughs> coming up to me with their, with their favorite copies of, you know, The Cat Returns and what have you. So, I'm, uh, yeah, it's wonderful. I'm very proud to be a part of them. They're amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, hi. Uh, my name's Brianna. Hi. Hi. I just, I was just curious if there's anything you've ever regretted turning down, you know? that, that like what? you missed out on something, like you regret turning down an offer or something um, like that. I don't live in regret. 
I think that's a, uh, yeah, but thank you for, I, I try not to live in that headspace. <laughs> I try to think positively, and, and if a role happens, it happens for a reason, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Hi. Hi, Hello. how are you? I'm Marley. Hi. How First you off, you're one of my favorite actors ever. I loved you in The Cat Returns. I'm oh, a total anime nerd. Thank you. Uh, Princess Bride, thank Robin you. Hood. Thank you. Um, what's one of the strangest mess-ups anyone's ever made on set or behind the scenes of The Cat Returns behind the microphone? On the what? On The Cat Returns? Yeah. It's like a mess-up somebody made. I don't think we had any mess-ups. I mean, we were all doing voiceovers. It's very, I mean, yeah. if we messed up, it was because we flubbed a take or something. But yeah. What about, like, uh, like a, a really weird, like, outtake or something on one of your movies? I don't know. <laughs> um, on, on any movie or on The Cat Returns? Like The Princess Bride movie. or Robin Oh, Hood. okay. Uh, well, okay. Here's a story. Uh, Wally Shawn. I wasn't the only person who thought he was going to be fired. You like Wally Shawn? Yeah, give it up for Wally. This is in the book, too. Wally had been told by his agent that, in fact, he was not the first choice for Vincini, and that, in fact, Danny DeVito was Rob Reiner's first choice. So the poor guy, for whatever reason, whether it was true or not, showed up on the set convinced that he was not the person that Rob wanted for this role which, by the way, couldn't have been further from the truth because Rob really loved him and fought for him to be in the movie. But that, that nothing could persuade Wally from being convinced that he was going to be fired from day one. And so the poor guy, the first scene he had to do on film was this four pages or five pages of dialogue, which is the famous Iocane powder. Yeah, you know the scene between... Yeah. 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 And, you know, if you look at that scene, I have maybe two or three lines where I just, you know, have a couple lines here and there. He has, you know, mountains of dialogue. And the guy showed up. I mean, he was just sweating, sweating bricks. He just, first of all, he was nervous about having five pages on his first day, which most actors, if you're handed five pages on your first day, it's kind of intimidating, you know. And, uh, but then add to that the fact that he thought he was going to be fired. And he would literally, between every take, he'd just walk up to people going, I'm going to be fired, you know. <laughs> uh, they're going to send me home, that's it. They're going to send me home, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm going home, I'm going home. They should book my ticket now because I really don't want to take a, a late flight home, you know. <laughs> and, and he spent the whole day, like, walking up to people going, I'm going to be fired, you know. You know they're going to fire me. And, and everyone was saying to him, Wally, what are you talking about? You're great. He goes, no, I mean, I, I flubbed the first take. I flubbed the second take. I flubbed the third take. I'm going to be fired. <laughs> I think it was Chris Guest who calmed him down and went, dude, it's inconceivable they're going to fire you. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, and God bless him if you look at him. I mean, you realize there's no one else, right, who could have played that role better than Wally. I mean, he was fantastic in it, right? Yeah. So, I guess as far as funny flubs and what have you, that would probably be the funniest one, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Carrie. My name Hi. is Sharna. Hi. Uh, you're lovely. Thank you thank for coming. Thank you. Thank um, you. You're one of my mom and my absolute favorite actors. Oh, thank you and, very much. And um, she was very sick last year with cancer. Oh. And whatever she wanted to watch was always Robin Hood Men in Tights. Okay. And we watched it over and over and over again. And, but thank she'll you. never forgive me if I don't ask you, when you were on Psych, there was an episode and you used... Camilla Parker Bowles as a type of cuss word, I guess. And she wanted to know if that was your ad lib or if that was actually in the script. Is there a line with Camilla Parker? Is there? Yes. Really? <laughs> yes. It's in, the, it's in your hotel. You're in the hotel room, and the boys come in, and they catch you. And I think you say, oh, Camilla Parker Bowles. And you say it oh, really Oh, in, um, I'm sorry. In, in, in you're psych. talking in psych. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, that was the that was the filmmakers. That was they, the yeah, 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 okay. yeah. Okay. Very funny, very silly. Yeah. Everything was silly on that show, as yeah. you can imagine. And it was just yeah. every every day was a rewrite of something sillier than what was on the page. I mean, it was just <laughs> completely nuts. So funny. Yeah. Yes, I wish I could say that was my idea, but it wasn't. Okay. Um, I fully approved of it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
No, yeah, thank you. And I'm sorry about your mom. I hope she's feeling better. Thank yeah. you so much. You're thank welcome. you for making her laugh. I okay, it. you're welcome. Very thank nice. You. Hi, Carrie. Laughter is the best medicine, I think, right? Indeed. Yeah. Hi, Carrie. My name's Tom. Huh. And you are one of my childhood film heroes. I grew up watching, like you said, a friend of mine recommended Princess Bride to me, and I've been hooked ever since. Cool. I've loved Thank you me. in Robin Hood Men in Tights, in Hot Shots, and as uh, Major Cabot Forbes in Glory. Thank you. And uh, Thank you. I, my, I have two quick questions. Uh, first question is, you mentioned you love history, and I also love history a lot. Is there any historical character that you would particularly like to play? Hmm, that's a good question. Um... I don't know, you know. Um, if you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, <laughs> but you got an Errol Flynn vibe Errol Flynn. about you. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. That's interesting. I think I'm probably a bit old for that now. But yeah, no, I, I, there's so many great uh, moments in history that have yet to be put on the screen. So I, I'm hopeful that at some point I'll get a chance to do another historical piece. Um, We'll see. I All don't know. right. And yeah. one quick question, because just yes. because maybe I'm dressed like this. What exactly is a chafing dish? Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. You know, I didn't know when it came to shooting that scene <laughs> what a chafing dish was. It had to be explained to me on the set. <laughs> and uh, um, if, for those of you who don't know, I play Lieutenant Kent Gregory, Lieutenant Kent Gregory in Hot Shots, and he's obsessed with chafing dishes. Why? <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't know. But anyway. Um, it's very funny, they brought this chafing dish on the set, and I went, what's that? They go, uh, that's a chafing dish. <laughs> I went, oh, wow, okay. And I had to carry it around and use it in the scene. It was very, it was very funny. I, I, it was completely ludicrous. And, and that's Jim Abrams and Pat Prof for you. I mean, they're quite brilliant people. Um, and uh, they were just completely nuts to, and, and fun to work with, so yeah. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome, thank you. <laughs> Hi, how are you? What's your name? Savannah. Hi. Um, in The Princess Bride, the grandfather reads to the grandson when he's sick, and whenever I was sick, Princess Bride would actually be on the TV. Really? <laughs> and, yeah, it was really weird. I'd get the flu and I'm turn on the TV, first thing that's on is Princess Bride. It was all a plot. <laughs> <laughs> and so Just to get you to watch the film. <laughs> So now it's a tradition. My mom will make me a uh, juk, which is a uh, rice porridge, and I'll watch Princess Bride whenever I'm sick. Um, I was wondering, what's your kind of tradition when you're sick, or like what um, do you do? Laying down and plenty of water. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I'll tend to either you know watch a show like you, or read a book, or yeah, try to do as little as possible while I heal is generally the plan of action. But I'm glad the Princess Bride helped you through it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Like I said, the, the power of humor is, is a good thing. Hello, I'm Anne Marie. Hi, Anne. Um, first of all, my brother couldn't make it, but he would kill me if I didn't ask you to do the claw from Liar Liar. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, you mean this claw? <laughs> the claw. My question is. Um, Oh, it just skipped my mind. Okay, um, <laughs> if there was ever a, a defining moment or a situation that made you realize that, oh my God, I am a celebrity now and my life will never be the same again, was there one instance that made you realize that or were you just, were you just kinda like, eh, whatever? You know, it's funny you mention that because um, when The Princess Bride started gaining traction in the video market, that's when I started getting recognized. Uh, you know, I'd go to a restaurant and all of a sudden, you know, I'd order a you know, a meal, pizza, whatever, and, and the waitress go, as you wish. <laughs> and I, I realized suddenly, everywhere I went, people were quoting lines to me. And, and God bless them, you know, it's amazing. This film has, is now part of the zeitgeist. It has this, this incredible thing. I mean, every single actor involved in the film has people walking up to them quoting like I mean, think about Wally Shawn. I, you know, he has to have people yelling inconceivable at him all day long, okay? 
Billy Crystal can't walk into a deli without someone going, you want mutton nice and lean? <laughs> I mean, it's impossible. So, yeah, it became this thing where everyone, you know, loves the movie so much that they want to quote the line to you, you know, which is, which is amazing. It's wonderful. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was fun. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? What's your I'm, name? I'm good. I'm a little surprised at the microphone. Let me do this. Okay. Uh, my name is Kai. Nice Hi. to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, before I ask my question, I just want to say that um, you're one of my favorite actors, and I've grown up with your body of work, and I've watched every genre you've done, and my family and I were just really grateful that you're out there working because uh, you're a fantastic you actor. A uh, another hug. <laughs> <laughs> question is about uh, Despero. I noticed that Psych has a tradition where they hire actors that they want and they write parts tailored to people and I wanted to know if Despero was tailored for you and was your reaction like, cool, or were you like, oh my god, I'm not doing this crazy show with these crazy people. No, haha. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a little of both, but yes, they tailored it for me. And, I knew uh, it! I yeah, knew it. yes, <laughs> yes. I know, isn't that amazing? I didn't yes. even have to read, isn't that incredible? I was, I was incredible. thrilled, like, yes! Um, <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> she has, if you can't tell, she's wearing cat ears. That's how much she loves the cat returns. God bless her. Thanks, Mary. No, um, I know. It was one of those things where they said, you know, we've, we've written this role with you in mind, and, and awesome. would you mind coming down and having some fun with us? It was literally like that. So I was very blessed. Very blessed. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Bye. you. My favorite movie of yours is Lady Jane, which oh, nobody's ever you. heard of. Wow. But, um, thank you. What was it like to play like a historical character like that? Because I know you said you like history a lot. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, what's very bizarre is that I'm a distant relative of Guilford Dudley, if you can believe that. I know. It's very strange. I get to play one of my ancestors. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, that one I did have to read for. <laughs> And uh, I went and met with uh, Trevor Nunn, who was the, uh, the then the director of the Royal Shakespeare Company, a wonderful director, a wonderful guy. Yes, Trevor Nunn, yeah, give it up for Trevor. And he asked me to go meet him down at, uh, in a rehearsal room somewhere on the embankment in London. And I remember being very nervous, of course, as I am before every reading. And, uh, and, uh, I went in there and, and he said, listen, we're just going to play around with these scenes and, and I'll, you know, we're just going to work, work on them a bit and see where we go with them and what have you. And so we spent about an hour just working on a couple of scenes, two or three scenes together. And, um, and then I left and I went home and I thought, you know, I hope I get the call. I don't know if I got the part or not. Apparently he'd been doing this with a lot of actors. And, uh, and then I fortunately I got the call saying, uh, they want you for the role. So I was thrilled. I lo like I said, it was an amazing cast too. I had Patrick Stewart. Yes. Uh, Jean-Luc Picard was in the film. Yes. The wonderful, Pat the wonderful Patrick Stewart. <laughs> who is now, you know, Xavier from X-Men, right? Yes. Very cool guy. Great guy. Um, he actually ended up coming back to do, um, play Richard in, in Robin Hood, which was very cool. Um, Yes, he's funny too. <laughs> um, it was a beautiful film, beautifully shot, beautifully made. We had a great time. It was Helen. It was Helena Bonham Carter. It was her first movie. movie. Yeah, um, yeah. You can give it up for Helena. Yeah. yeah. I thought she was amazing. It was her first role, and she really was incredible in it. And you know, I already made a couple of movies, so I was, you know, she was definitely. Uh, you know, feeling more nervous than I was at that point, even though we were both a little insecure about being in this big production together. Um, it was easily the most expensive budget movie I'd done at that point in my career. And, um, but what was fortunate about it, apart from the fact that I got to be in it, which was amazing, was that was the film that Rob Reiner saw that made him think of me for the role of Wesley. So uh, if I hadn't done it, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, so I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank you. We have time for one more question. One more question for Carrie, so make it a good one. Hi, Carrie. Hi. My name is also Carrie, so. Oh, hi, Carrie. Yeah. 
Um, my question is, you said you were a fan of the book, and I'm a huge fan of the book. I was wondering if there was anything in it that you wished could have been in the movie. Was there anything in the book that I wished could have been in the movie? Yes. Um, you know, the, we thought about putting the zoo of death uh, in the film, but it, was en it ended up being so expensive that, uh, you know, we realized, I think Rob had a limited budget anyway, as I mentioned. So there was, there w it was written originally as a, as a sequence where I think myself and Fezzik or Indigo, I'm not sure, I can't remember. Is it, it you probably fun. know more, it was it Fezzik? Or is it Fezzik and, Fezzik and Indigo, right? Yes, you were dead. Yes. And <laughs> they go through, <laughs> good answer. Um, yeah, and they go through the zoo of death together and they try and battle all these strange animals and what have you. But I think they realized, Rob Reiner realized that it was going to be so expensive that he would need to save that money and use it elsewhere on the film, so it was cut. Um, you know. Today, would they have probably put it in? Maybe, I don't know, but that would have mean we wouldn't have the pit of despair. So, you tell me. <laughs> would you prefer to have seen nipples uh, attached, have a suction pad attached, attached to my nipples and have me scream death? Or would you rather have seen me battle animals in the zoo of death? I don't know, you tell me. Uh, it was perfect the way it was. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome. <laughs> well. I got, I, got, I got just a couple of things I want to add. I know that we're really excited to read this book. I know. How many people are going to go pre-order this thing? You've got to get this thing yeah, on Amazon. Please do. Thank you so much. I know much. you're still working on it, and I, and I can't ra wait to, to hear more of the stories about Princess Bride. Uh, the other thing is, uh, can you say it one more time for us? What? The line. What line? You know. What are you talking about? Come on. No way. Please. Okay. As you wish. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kerry Elwes. Thank you all for coming. Thank you.